So when it comes down to using your airbrush, especially for people that are a little newer to using an airbrush, the number one question I get is, can I just use like regular acrylic hobby paints or do I have to get that special like airbrush paint? And the question today is going to be answered. You can absolutely use this stuff. I am going to show you how you can thin any acrylic paint down to use in your airbrush. Okay, so I am going to show you my process for how I thin my paints for my airbrush. Now, this works for any acrylic paint. So I even have my more expensive paints here and I do the exact same thing. So I have my Vallejo model color and game color, which game color is one of my favorite lines. Then I have my army painter, which is a good like midline paint. And then I've got my cheaper acrylic paints. Like these are like 99 cent bottles of paint. And I am a big advocate for the cheaper paints because these are great. But there's a time and place I feel. I don't want to paint every single model with my most expensive paints. Sometimes I just need some big base colors and I'm throwing down a ton of paint, which I would use an entire bottle of this. And I don't care if I use an entire bottle of this because I can just go to my local craft store and go get another 99 cent bottle. So this video, I'm primarily going to focus on how I thin these paints specifically because it's the same process for these paints as well. Now, one thing to note, not all paints are created equal. And I don't mean one is better than another. I mean that they're just not created the exact same way. They all basically use the same things when it comes to making the paint. Like there's the median and things like that inside this and like water in acrylic paints because that's the base. But when it comes to the pigment itself, some pigments will naturally give more thinner paints than others. So like I'm going to use these two as an example. So if I take the cap off and squeeze the bottle, you can see how this is pretty liquidy. It's a very thin paint. So this light blue is just naturally thin. And then I've got this one and just just before you ask, this is a new bottle. And you can see how much thicker this is. This paint is a lot thicker than this paint. And it's not because folk art has thick paints. I have other folk arts that are very thin like this one. So not all of your paints are going to be the exact same. So you can't always say, I'm going to squirt a little bit in here and then I'm going to use eight drops of this, of you know whatever my thinner is, and then I'm going to be good because I'm going to be using more thinner for this than I would be this. Because the key here is we're looking for a specific consistency of our paint. To get a little sciency on you, we're looking for the right viscosity because it needs to flow a certain amount to be able to get through the tip of our airbrush. So there's a few things that we're going to need. One thing I will note, if you've watched any of my videos where I'm using my airbrush, I mix everything right in the pot. And it's not always the best thing to do, but I have a very good understanding of how much thinner I need to do and how thin I need my paints. So I just mix it right in. But if you're new and getting started, I strongly recommend you mixing it outside of your ink pot. And I bought a ton of these medicine cups on Amazon for pretty cheap. And I'll go ahead and put a link to these in the description. Because once I'm done with it, I just throw it away. Because it came with a lot of these. The other thing you're going to need is something to stir stuff with. I actually just bought like a thousand pack of coffee stirs. They were super cheap on Amazon too. And they're really good to just mix your paints. And once again, when I'm done with this, I just toss it in the trash. And the other thing is these, these little pipettes. And the purpose of the pipettes are you can suck up your paint easily and pour it in there if you're not comfortable with pouring it in. You can also use these to measure your thinners. So we're going to be using, so the type of thinners that I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using Flow Improver, I'm going to be using airbrush thinner. And the other thing is, is just plain distilled water. I actually buy it by the jugs and then just pour it into water bottles so I can easily manage it. And that's also what I have in here. I have a little syringe that I can easily just squirt water into and control the drops. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this Irish moss and it's an Americana paint. So the first thing you want to do is you wanna figure out how much paint you're gonna have because it'll almost double the amount that you put in here after we're done thinning it. And that is not an exact science. Sometimes you're gonna get less, sometimes you'll get a lot more depending on how thick the paint is. So there we go. Now we have our paint in there. And just to show you, because this is important, if I grab it on the end of my stick and touch on the side, you can see that it sticks there. That is an important thing for the method that I use, at least. So it is a thicker paint. So what we're going to do now is we can decide which we want to use. So Flow Improver is great. It'll actually thin down your paints really good, just as well as airbrush thinner, but there's actually a retarder in here which slows the dry of your paint. So if you're putting a lot down and you want it to stay wet for a little while for some reason, Flow Improver is the way to go. Then there's airbrush thinner. Airbrush thinner is fantastic, and the great thing about airbrush thinner is it will make your paint dry quickly. So if you're doing a bunch of coats and you want it to dry in between coats faster, airbrush thinner is the way to go. Then the other thing is distilled water. Now, I like using distilled water because I don't always want to use my thinner or flow improver. And the great thing about distilled water is when you're using these hobby acrylics, the base is water. So there's already water in here. You can, if you use too much of this, you will break down the paints, but you also can mix it. I've actually made batches where I would have 50% distilled water, 50% airbrush thinner, just to make my airbrush thinner last a little longer. Now, this is the way I do it. I've never really had an issue with Americana, Folk Art, or Apple Barrel when it comes to watering down my paints. I have heard that on some of those really cheaper acrylic paints, like the 50 cent bottles, water, distilled water, it just doesn't work out too well. And that's what you really wanna test. But these are the three methods that I recommend when it comes to thinning down your paints. So what I'm going to use today is just my distilled water. Like I said before, I'm not going to tell you you need to put 10 drops in. Like, I'm just going to put a little bit in there just to pretty much cover the whole top of my paint. And then I'm going to mix this up real good. So here's the key. After I've got it all mixed together, I will take, I will take the end of my paint and just push it on the side of it. And if it doesn't flow down immediately, then it is too thick. So what I've got to do is I'm going to have to add more of my thinner. See how it's just slowly dripping down the side right there? It's just not thin enough yet. So I'm going to take some of my distilled water and just add a few more drops to it. And I'm not going to add a lot to it. And this is where you want to add just little increments at a time because you do not want to get this too thin. You just want to get it thin enough. So I'm going to stir that up again real good. And now I'm going to try it. Get some on my end and you can see how it's starting to drip down really well. Like this is getting very close. So I am going to add just a couple drops. Okay, stir it even more. And you really wanna mix it good. And now you can see how thin this is getting. So now I'm gonna take some on the end and you can see how this starts to just drip down. That is typically the key for me of like seeing how well it will drip down the side. You want that consistency. So this I would say is good, but I'm probably going to add just like maybe two or three more drops just to thin it even more. And let's test it out. You can see how it's already starting to flow down. See how it just drips down there? That, to me, is 
really good and thinned. So now we have our thinned paint done. So the one thing I will say, if you're going to start mixing in your color cup, what I use is a brush to mix it. I don't use a coffee stirrer. I use just a nice brush and I mix it in there. The one thing I do is I always put my thinner in first because if you just pour paint directly into your ink cup, it's going to get stuck in there and you're going to immediately get a clog. So you want to put your thinner in first, whatever that might be, water, thinner, flow improver, doesn't matter, but always put that in first. Then you put your paint in. The one thing I do is I put enough of my thinner in here and then I do the exact opposite. Just like we were adding water to it, I'm going to add paint to it. So I add a little bit of paint, mix it up. If it still looks too thin, I'll add a little more paint and keep mixing it up until it's the right consistency. And what, I do, what I'll do is when I'm mixing it up, I'll actually just wipe my brush on the side of the cup and then if I see it flow down really easily, then I know that I've got it thinned enough. But that is after you're comfortable mixing it in a cup first. Real quick, I just want to say thank you to all of my awesome patrons this month. If you're interested in becoming one of my patrons, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord servers where we're discussing everything 3D printing, everything painting, and just showing off some cool works of art. But you'll also get access to all of my behind the scenes content, as well as Patreon only tutorials. So if you're interested, I'll go ahead and put that link below for you, and we'll get back to this video. So once you have your paint mix, there's one of two ways that you can do it. You can either just pour your paint directly into your color cup, you can take a pipette or a syringe because I know some people actually put their paints in a syringe. They just suck it all up and they keep pour it, pouring it in here. And then the nice thing about a syringe is you can unplug it and clean this after you're done. But I'm going to take a pipette and then all I'm going to do is squeeze it real good and suck up that paint. And there we go. So now I've got my paint in there. And then you're just going to pour it directly into your color cup. And then just set that to the side. And now it's ready to airbrush. So I actually have my battery powered compressor that I'm just gonna test this out with just to show you that this is a good consistency. All right, so I keep all of my failed prints. This is actually a failed base to one of the chibis that I was trying to print out on FDM. And I'm just going to use this to just kind of show you how well this works. So funny thing, uh, I did not clean this good enough last time, so it's giving me some spatters. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Infinity that I know is clean because I cleaned it really good last time I used it. And this is a really good thing because I'm going to show you this because I always show you guys when I screw up. You can also use this if you hold it upside down. You can use this and squeeze it again and suck out the paint so you don't waste any. So there we go. Now I can fill this one up. And there we go. And now we can connect this. And spray with this one. Let's try this one out. So there we go. Now that's nice and thin. So there you go, you can see that it works beautifully. It's thinned enough to where I'm not getting any clogs. And this is all just our cheap acrylic paint. So for a dollar a bottle versus, you know, three or four dollars a bottle, it is worth trying to thin your paints with the cheaper acrylic paints. Now this process, like I said, works the exact same way with the more expensive paints like Vallejo. 
So the one thing I've noticed with the Vallejo paints, they are a little bit thinner and they're just a little easier than to thin. Now there is the specific airbrush paints you can use and you basically just pour it in there. Some of them are ready to go. Some of them are a one to one ratio. So if you know you use like eight drops, you're gonna need eight drops of a thinner. So you are well on your way now to using any acrylic paints for your airbrush. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And other than that, I just hope you all have a great day and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good one.